from Toronto to LeBronto. And take that and the combo of Lowry and DeRozan not doing what many thought they should, or certainly the two of them would have liked. And this is what netted the last four years for the Raptors. In comes Kawhi. How different can things be? More on this series in their opening round matchup with the Magic. Here's Jared Greenberg. There is a whole bunch of optimism here in Toronto, mostly due to all the new faces, Kawhi Leonard, Marc Gasol, Danny Green. But it's also about the face that's no longer in the way of the Raptors. Each of the last three seasons, they've been eliminated by LeBron James. But this year, is not in the picture as he left the Eastern Conference. Obviously, you got a player like that, of that nature, um, in your conference or in your coast, it's tough to get past you know him and his team because he always has a team playing at a high level. But so regardless of that, I, mean, I think everybody in the East thinks it's wide open to have a shot to actually get to that final stage. Um, it's really the team that's going to be most disciplined, executes the best. So I think the team that's going to get there. It's not that I don't sense the the talk about the East. I, I think it's great. Um, I'm not sure. I guess we're going to find out here, but I'm not sure if it's made it better or worse with LeBron gone, right? I think I think there's a lot of teams that said, man, let's go all in here. And um, there's really, really a lot of talent in the East, and that's why um, everybody's talking about it. I said earlier in the year, obviously before the trades happened, uh, we traded quite a few guys away. Uh, but I thought we were like one of the, was one of the most talented, deepest teams that I've, I've been a part of. But um, now I think we have a little more experience. Uh, I think we're still a very talented group, one of the most talented group of guys that I've been with in a while. It is not easy to make tough decisions, but you take tough and then you take what happened with Masai Smitty in the offseason because you've got Dwayne Casey, a coach of the year. You've got a record number of wins. LeBron leaving or not, to make the decision to go ahead and make those moves, bring in Kawhi, which could be for a year, there's a lot on the line. So now what does Kawhi bring them that gives them an opportunity this year to go much further than they have. You know, the first thing is, defensively, he can shut down. That wing guy, the guy you, you look at, it could be a 20-point score. He can have problems with him. Second for them is you have a guy now on the other side that can score in different ways. I like that he can score down on the block and that he's methodical. He doesn't just rely on one thing. He's going to get his points, and he doesn't have to go out there and have a 95 to 100 dribbles each possession. I love what he brings to this table, and he allows other guys to be good as well. Sometimes people have a game, Brendan, where they can get 25 or 30, but it doesn't allow everybody else. He allows everybody else to be good around him, and he can get his points. Also a guy who's won games as their closer defensively and offensively so far this season. Now, defense, offense, leadership. Look, Marcus Gasol and the Memphis Grizzlies, we knew all of that. When he came in, it was Ibaka starting. He's on the bench. Then he's starting. Now they're back and forth. I know you don't love the way that that's handled. Decisions have to be made. So what about the Gasol impact and how he's going to be handled now in this I game? think Gasol and Ibaka are both going to be huge for Toronto, not just in this Packs it from a defensive standpoint and offensive and rebounding shot blocking standpoint. So he's able to hit shots from the three point line to the mid range, but then he's able to go out there and make those monster blocks and switch the screen and roll. And he gives you that two way defender. Well, Mark Gasol, you could take advantage of him sometimes in the screen and roll a little bit, but offensively, he's somebody you can play through in the post. So if Kawhi isn't having his best stuff or if Kyle Lowry's having one of those playoff funks that he's been known to get into, you can throw the ball to Marcus Saul. He can get you some points here and there, and he can get you assists. So I really like the combo of these two guys. When you put these two guys together, the two-headed center that the Toronto Raptors have right now, you definitely have a lot of experience and a lot of talent involved in that group. You know, tough. Anytime you get injuries, we dealt with it with Boston and Marcus Smart right before the playoffs. Terrible news with the emergency appendectomy. OG Ananobi, such a terrific player. Uh, it looks like, and Woja just reported as we're on the air here, it could be till the East Finals should they get that far. Does many of the little things, maybe not all on the stat sheet, what kind of an impact is that from a loss perspective taking him out? And then who needs to step up in that group? Well, we looked at him last year. He started. And he was guarding LeBron in that series. Uh, he's a player that's a young guy, but again, a lot of experience. His offense is starting to get better. Uh, I think you won't miss him so much in this first round, but going forward in the second round and maybe Eastern Conference Finals, if he's not available, all the wing guys you might have to play, you would definitely miss. And it's just another guy. If you got to have a guy in foul trouble, or say you have another injury, he has been through it. I, I love what he does without the basketball. There's so many guys who can't play without it. He knows how to. So it's a huge loss 
for the Toronto Raptors. Do you believe in magic in the playoffs? Love watching how excited Aaron Gordon was when he came on game time after they got in. And why? Because this is how they finished. 11-2 and two down the stretch. People talking about who gets in and who doesn't. Maybe sleeping on where the Magic were. So it's a big regular season. Their recent success. Their defense. We break that down with advanced stats and insights from SAP. Turvey. But when you look at the Magic, one thing has been a constant, Brendan. That is the Vooch story. Fantastic during the course of the year. What kind of an impact can he have to make this a tougher series than maybe some people or pundits look at it from the outside? Well, Vooch is a very versatile big man. He goes inside, outside. He can shoot the ball. He can pass the ball. So what he has to do is he has to establish himself from the beginning. They can't, I mean, they're, they're up against the eight ball anyway. They, they're, going, they're moving uphill in this type of uh, series. But if they are going to extend the series and possibly win it, it's going to be because Vucevic takes his game to another level. A lot of uh, casual basketball fans probably haven't seen Vucevic play a lot of basketball. They're going to be treated to seeing one of the better big men in the NBA when you look at from the offensive end. What he does is truly special as far as taking his time on the block. He has great footwork. He has a nice mid-range jumper. Excellent moves, good free throw shooter, and he can hit the three-point shot. You know, I know it's not the NCAA tournament, but you and I were just talking about this guard play is still important. Yes. That's where the question lies and how much they can maybe put that pressure on Kyle Lowry when you look at Augustine and Fournier in that group. They've done a nice job. Is it enough, though, Smitty? Well, I, I don't know if it's enough because I think because of the size of DJ Augustine, but he's had a fantastic year. Fournier has to knock down shots, but the key to me for the Orlando Magic is Aaron Gordon. You know, sometimes I think he gets confused on whether he's a small forward or a power forward the way he plays, where he's shooting threes or he's posting up. He's going to have to have that balance. And that Siakam Aaron Gordon is going to be huge, that matchup between those two. Their big shot maker all year has been Terrence Ross. It's been a huge resurgence. So look for him in this series. Have to hit some of those. Big shot making, maybe not his thing, but creating for them certainly is. Will he have him beat on the floor? More on the Sixers coming. Spark to hang out with the three of us. David Griffin, sorry, even you, be would uh, expected to join the Pell's front office. Uh, that news uh, out reported uh, among other places yesterday here. Look, you can overstate this and talk about it over and over again. As smart and genuine an individual as you'll ever meet, David Griffin, for sure. Love working with him here. I mean, he brought a lot of insight. He just loved the person he is. And obviously, great to see him get another chance and for us to be able to call him and get all the tickets we want. We look forward <laughs> to that, Griff. But I'm happy for him, B-Wood, to get a chance. And obviously, he's going into a situation that's rocky right now. He's going to have a lot to clean up and a lot of direction to see where he wants to go because it all comes down there how and where he moves Anthony Davis. I'm happy. Or convince him to stay. Yeah, I, well, no, that's not going to happen. Okay. He's not that good a salesman. <laughs> I, I love Griff, but he's not going to be able to do that. He's going to have to move Anthony Davis. I have uh, absolute faith and confidence that he's going to get an excellent deal for the Pelicans. He's going to set them up for the future. I had a chance my last year to be a part of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he was the GM there, obviously. And some of the moves and stuff he did behind the scenes went unnoticed. They thought it was all LeBron James, but figuring out, hey, Deion Waiters doesn't fit, bringing in J.R. Smith, Amon Shumpert, doing the deal for Mozgov, bringing in good veterans that can help that locker room. He did a lot behind the scenes that helped that team win a championship. It just wasn't the LeBron James show. Griff played a major part in that, and I'm glad that he's going to get a second chance. No, no better matchup than Griff and Mardi Gras, except for Embiid and must-watch TV, because guess what? He's playing. Joel Embiid. Oh, yeah. Ready to dance. Game one. Sixers, Nets. This series gonna be good. Don't go anywhere. We get a look at D'Angelo Russell and the Brooklyn Nets who are preparing for an opportunity to make a statement like they have all season. Ben Simmons hoping a bigger statement than what happened in the playoffs last year. Question might be, what would the load be for him in game one? Is Embiid going to play? How much will he play? Lots to get to with Roz Golden Mude, who joins us, who is there live for game one of what should be a fantastic series. And uh, Roz, let me start with this. Embiid, we know game time decision. We saw him in warm up. It looked like he could go. What's the latest on his scenario? 
Yes, I'm here in Philly. Joel Embiid was out there doing a pregame warm-up. It included dunks and uh, drives and shots. He's got a big old brace, a gray brace on that left knee. He may play with it. He may not. It has been, it has been cited uh, throughout the second half of the season with him since the All-Star break. But um, after he finished working out, I walked off the court with him. I've had 76ers games in the past where he's had back pain or it was a game-time decision, and he often would be like, I'm about to play. I'm playing. You know, Today, he, he looked me in the eye and said, honestly, I really still don't know yet. And I think that is because it's a conversation about pain that is changing from day to day. It's about his pain. Oh. He told me it hurts when he's jumping, when he's landing. He said with a smile, moving, it hurts. Um, so it's also something that he's doing rehab with, with uh, massages and ice therapy. They're also really taking care to look at his diet and how he's eating because he missed 14 games since the All-Star break. And he looks a little bigger too. You know, the conditioning is, is an aspect for a big man as well. So, uh, and one of the words he used with this as well is tendonitis. Um, and that kind of pain can be really intolerable at times. What I know about Joel Embiid is that he wants to be on the court. He is incredibly frustrated by this injury. He had an MVP caliber season. He has battled with injuries his whole career. And I know that at the timing of this is incredibly frustrating. My gut feeling is that he will play. Um, he looked mobile enough out there. It's about him being able to manage his pain tolerance. It's not official yet. And I know that Kenny Atkinson on the other side for the Nets has fully prepared his team for the idea that Joel Embiid will play. They are expecting to see him game one. So we'll get an official announcement, just a gut feeling. I think Joel will be out there. Roz, we showed uh, shots to two great segue because here's the interesting. We talk about the antithesis, right? Home versus road experience so far in this show. You've got one team where we wonder, is there a fractured chemistry? Is there enough? The other team, as well coached as anybody, whether Kenny Brendan wins the award or not this year, and they are as together a group as anybody. We all, how many shots of the bench do we show right. during every shot? How much does that mean? Because they have shot makers and talent, but give us a sense of beyond that, that togetherness, that unit of Brooklyn. How much can that be affected? Listen, when you play for your brothers and you guys are together, that is a whole nother level of energy. When you look over there and it seems like nothing, when D'Angelo Russell hits a shot, you see Theo Pinson oh, yeah. get, up, get up and he's over there dancing. That's something for you to play off of. And especially when you're on the road in the playoff series where you have to bring your own energy, the bench and cheering for each other and pulling for each other and having that genuine love can definitely get you over the hump in a playoff series. When you look at the East, one thing said a lot about Boston is Kyrie difference maker. Why can get you that shot in the fourth quarter? We don't talk enough about maybe nationally. This team's got three of those guys at the guard position in Dinwiddie, in Levert, and of course, deloading at the front end, Smitty, who can all do that. And then to go back to what you guys talked about, chemistry. These guys play the same type of way. They're all young, and they still all three root for each other. You talk about Dinwiddie, Karis Levert, and DeAndre Russell, same size, similar play, same kind of age, and they d love to root for each other. And then they're number one in drive. So if the basketball is kicked, you have a guy on the wing that can make the drive and make the play. The basketball is kicked on the other way. He can make the drive. They have three guys that can create their own, and they share it. And we learned this at the All-Star. You don't sleep on Joe Harris. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, not at uh, all. My younger, that's my younger, Not at all. You might want to pay attention. Big we got game, more. Joe. Can you believe it is? It feels like Friday Night Live. It's and playoffs. It's going to be the difference. I can see it. It's playoffs. No laughing matter this time for Kawhi. How deep can the Raptors go? <laughs> is that his laugh or is that Jerry Greenberg? That's Jerry. Oh, jeez. <laughs>